Um, you know, life, life is a journey of change. I mean, you're not who you were when you were five and you're not who you were when you were 10 or 15 or 20. You're not who you're going to be in 10 years. You're a, you're a semblance of that, but you're not completely that because you're on a journey. Life is a station of stops and goes. It's learning a little bit, processing what we learn, filtering out what isn't useful for us, and then moving on with that information and then learning a little bit more. And so life is this series of ideas and principles. You get an, a set of ideas and principles dropped into you when you're a little child. They don't have, I'm, I'm talking about stuff that doesn't have anything to do with the church or religion or faith. They're just the principles of your family or your heritage or your culture, but they're yours and they're real. And then you grow up and you start to work out those ideas and those principles. Some of them become your ideas and principles. And some of them you say, that was dad's idea. That was mom's principle. And you abandon them. And then you meet Christ and you come up with a whole new set. And you realize that half the ones mom and dad taught you, Jesus teaches. You know, like don't punch your neighbor in the face and quit stealing his money and don't lie to him. And you go, hey, that sounds familiar. Sounds like my dad. And that's just because there's that overlap in a lot of the principles that brought us up, that made us who we are, that made us young adults and then made us adults and then it'll make us older adults and they'll follow us to our grave and they define the decisions that we make and what we do. And the beauty of this journey is that these things get knocked down, deconstructed, demolished, and then new ones get put in their place because nature abhors a vacuum. So anything you knock down, you have to put something back there. So when you come up against a principle you no longer believe in, you tear it down. But you've got to put something there. And we do. And our theology works that way. We have an idea. Maybe we read a verse or we see something about God we believe. And then that gets deconstructed. It gets knocked down. A sledgehammer gets taken to it. And then we have to reconstruct something in its place. And that process goes on and it goes on over and over and over again. And that's a beautiful thing. That's not a bad thing. That's, it can be tiring. It can be a little exhausting. I, I know when I come into a revelation of grace that God loved me and that he approved me and that he wanted to be a part of my life and that he didn't need my help, that his grace could do all the work without Paul White doing the work Paul could only believe. Well, I had to deconstruct a bunch of stuff. I had to take a sledgehammer to a whole list of theological principles and ideas that had defined me as a preacher and as a husband and as a dad and as a man of God. I had to knock them all down. Well, that, there's a vacuum, so they had to be rebuilt. And I had to start reading the Bible again and maybe even differently and change my lens a little bit and see that maybe it wasn't all about what I could do for God. Maybe it was about what God had done for me. And if I read it through that lens, I might see things through a different light. Well, how many of you know that as you're on the journey of knocking stuff down and building stuff up, and that requires a hammer change, by the way. So you can knock stuff down with a sledgehammer, but you don't build a house with a sledgehammer. So you got to back off knocking people, knocking stuff down once in a while, and you got to rebuild something. But on that journey, it's easy to get mad at your old self. Man, I did. I get mad at the old me and the stuff I preached and the stuff I believed and bought into and tried to convince other people of. And I went, man, I wish I could go back and punch that dude in the nose for being so cocky and thinking he knew it all and all that. And you get, you, you can get bitter. You can get angry. And then you reconstruct, you get something new, this new revelation. And I don't know if anybody else has ever felt this way, but then after you're mad at who you used to be and all the people that are still back there, you get something else and you grow a little bit. And then you get a little bit mad at where you were six months ago. <laughs> and all of those slow-minded people that are still back there in that revelation, why don't they grow up? And get a, a fresh word of God like I have. And are you seeing the cycle here? Yeah. You, gotta, you knock stuff down, you rebuild stuff, you get mad at where you were and all the people that are still there. And it's very easy to just sort of perpetuate that cycle. So maybe it's time to take a step back and stop concerning ourselves so much with every, where everyone else is. Because everybody's on a journey and we're not all in the same place. And that's okay because that's just life. And if you think you're in the spot where you're going to end up staying, that means you're about to die. Because that also means you've surrendered the ability to grow, learn, and get better. And I don't want to give that up until I'm done on this planet. 
So once you hit that last moment where there's no more revelation to be had, get ready to pick out your grave spot because there's nothing, there's no good meaning under the sun for you to stay here any longer. Because growing means you're pliable and you're human and you're one of the sons of God. What did Jesus do? He grew in favor with God and man. If he did, I want to. So it's a continual process. So as the word opens up these beautiful truths to us and we unmine and unpack and uncover these gorgeous things, remember what Paul said. This was a great one. He had a lot of good ones. In 1 Corinthians 8, 2, Paul said, if a man thinks he knows anything, he doesn't know anything yet the way he ought to. Or as we might say it in our modern vernacular, when you think you know something is the day you know you know nothing. Is that confusing enough for you? <laughs> Keep learning, because when a man thinks he knows, the one thing he can be sure of is he doesn't know what he ought to. I love that, that he uses the phrase ought to. In other words, there's a bunch of stuff you should know that you don't know, so quit acting like you know a bunch of stuff. So I'm learning there's a bunch of stuff I don't know that I ought to know, so maybe I shouldn't act like I know very much. And so I don't bring you a big chest full of knowledge this weekend or try to minister something new into your life. Who am I? What do I have that might be new? But as we hear and respond to the voice of the Spirit, we walk in that knowledge and we grow in that knowledge.